Come on. You slither up to me. Want me, you want to use my gifts. I'll give you, I'll write you a check for ten thousand dollars if you can get me well of this cancer. Bye bye, you're gonna die. I won't preach your funeral for less than ten thousand. <laughs> I gotta be on that plane tomorrow. I don't know who's gonna preach your funeral. Come on, somebody. Preach it. You can't buy nothing from God like that. That's right. If you don't live for God, then you're disqualified. If you don't live for God, you're disqualified. That don't mean you live perfect, but that means you strive for excellence. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You strive for excellence every day of your life. Yeah. You're honest in your affairs. If you know you're going to be late on your bill, you don't wait till you're late and wait till somebody calls you. Tell them, hey, uh, I'm going to be a couple of days behind on this. You can give me a little grace, you know. God will give you some grace. Come on, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Nobody got to hunt me down to find nothing. I'm right here in Sierra Vista. It's all over the internet. It's been all over the radio. It's all over everywhere. The government don't have to worry, wonder where I'm at. All you got to do is flip on jerryleeanderson.com. Boop, there I am. Where you at, Sierra Vista? Come on down here and join me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody got to try to find my phone numbers is on there. Right. He'll be calling me. Oh, Lord. Where's Jerry? He disappeared. I ain't disappeared. Hallelujah. One of these days, you know what? I think I'm going to be close enough to Jesus. You know how Jesus, when they come out to kill him, and he disappeared out of their sight, and he, he passed through the midst of them, and they couldn't find him? They let him out the, to the cliff to throw him overboard, <laughs> to push him over the cliff. Hallelujah. Next thing you know, he just disappears. Yeah. Or what about Brother Philip? When he's translated, he got raptured, didn't he? <laughs> he's translated from one place to 100 miles down the road, across the desert. Praise Hallelujah. One of these days, I'm going to be that close to God. Amen. I'll be like, now you see me, now you don't. I'm gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. To travel at the speed of light with nothing but a thought. Wouldn't that be something to be that close to God? Amen. To get that glorified estate. That body one day will catch up with my spirit. Woo. See, y'all look up here and you see I, that I haven't missed too many meals. I used to have a six pack. Now I got a keg, you know. <laughs> I used to be so good looking. Y'all got to see it by faith. <laughs> uh, you should have seen me 20 years ago. I mean, I was bad news, man. They used to line up and give me their phone numbers. Sister Anderson didn't like that much. <laughs> she put a stop to that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody just slip up your hands and say, I'm glad I came to church tonight. Come on, put them Holy Ghost hands together. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, who is the light of the world, told two women at the tomb at 6 o'clock in the morning, don't touch me, for I've not yet ascended under the Father. And 12 hours later, 6 p.m. that night, he told Doubting Thomas, go ahead and touch me. Thrust your hand in my side. Touch the nail scars in my hands and my feet. So that tells me that between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. he traveled to heaven and came back. Now let's say that he moved at the speed of light to get there, to get back, and the whole time he was gone. We'll assume then, conservatively speaking, it took six hours one way, six hours back at the speed of light, which would have placed heaven, the throne room, some four trillion miles away from planet Earth at that time. I believe heaven's been getting closer ever since. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? 
that at the speed of love, the speed of light, our Lord and our God traveled to yonder place and returned again. Requiring that no one touch him before, but that everyone, whosoever will, come and participate thereafter. And that same Jesus said, the same one you're saying, come on Lord Jesus, come on back, come on back. But he said, I'll never leave you. Hello. And I'll never forsake you. The head can't do nothing without the body. He's here right now tonight in Sierra Vista. You're looking up in the heavens and he's right here on the earth with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen to me. He came back, spent 40 days with his disciples. Taught unto them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Things which were never recorded in the Holy Bible. What were those things he discussed? As for another sermon. You come back tomorrow night and I'll tell you some of them. <laughs> come on, put them Holy Ghost hands together and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And he left in the presence of over 500 witnesses. And the angels stood by and said, Why stand you gazing in the heaven? The same Jesus you see taken shall return again in like manner. Jesus said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Amen. Jesus comes by His Spirit again. He comes by His Spirit to earth again. And fulfills His promise, I have been with you, but I shall be in you. And in fills the church with the same power whereby He was raised from the dead. He came again. And appeared to brother Saul of Tarsus on the Damascus road. He came again and appeared throughout history. He's appeared to Jerry Lee Anderson on more than one occasion. Some of you in here tonight, he's appeared and talked with you. And helped you through some tough times in your life. And while they're preaching and we've been talking about all of these 2,000 years, talking about the second coming, he has come again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again to rescue you and me. And he's here to rescue somebody in this room tonight. If you're in this room tonight and you're not 100% sure, if you were to close your eyes in death, that the next person you would see would be the Lord Jesus Christ welcoming you into his bosom. You can be 100% certain before you walk out that door tonight. If you're watching this tonight, you can be just as sure for heaven right now as if you were already in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want every person in this room to stand with me and I want you to lift your hands to heaven. If there's anything standing between you and God tonight. He said not to the world but to the Christians. Lay aside the sin and the weights that doth so easily beset you. Those of you that are watching I want you to pray with us just like you're right here in this service. Because you're here. God's made a way through technology. You're right here in this service with us tonight. Say with me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive, all of my sins. forgive all of my sins. Take these weights from me. Take these from me. I'm, on my I'm on my way to heaven. My sinning days are over. My doubting days are over. And my crying days are behind me. I'm not going to hell. Thank you for dying for me. And for washing me clean. From all of my sins. I'm yours. From now on. In Jesus name. Amen. Well let's shout and praise God together. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer. 
and meant it from the bottom of your heart, I want you to contact us. There'll be information on your screen. Those of you in the service with us tonight, I want to encourage you. After I leave this city, the spirit of revival is not going to leave with me. God's given birth to something powerful in this Amen. place. Brother, it's going to sweep from that church over there. God is good. Oh, hallelujah. I'll never forget that building. I've still got the picture of it in my phone. I'll never forget it. The church in Sierra Vista, Brother Bill, those that are interested in the move of God, you're going to get it. It's already begun. Sierra Vista is one of God's hubs. It is one of God's epicenters for this last day's move of the Holy Ghost. It's not coincidence that God gave birth to a miracle ministry right here in this area decades ago. But now look, there's a river close by here that some 50 years ago overflowed its banks. Unheard of in the desert. And now this year of all years, 2014 again, it's overflowed. Praise God. Praise God said, I will cause streams to flow in the desert. Yes. He said, I will cause the desert to blossom as a rose. This is the desert God's referring to in this season. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God sent me here right on time. Ma'am, if you believe what I'm telling you, you're going to leave here totally healed tonight and totally well in your body. The devil's tried to run your nerves and your mind into the ground. He's tried to put you in all kinds of medicine and different things. But no more after tonight. It's over with. God's doing it. It's already begun. I know you feel it right now in your body. Lift your hands if that's true. Somebody just give the Lord all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. This young man to my right over here, sir, the anointing that I have felt from you tonight has given me such strength. I didn't know if I could get done preaching or not. I just felt the, the anointing just running over in my spirit. God's got a great mantle and a great anointing upon your life and a great work for you to do. And this is the time when God's going to get some things kick-started that's been needing to happen, some changes that's been needing to take place for a long time. It starts tonight. Slip up your hand, just praise the Lord for it right there. It starts tonight in Jesus' name. This lady standing next to you is a living, breathing miracle. This man is a walking miracle. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a blanket of anointing and protection upon you. The enemy has meant you great harm in this season in your life and people close to you. But the plans of the enemy are canceled tonight. Whatever he's tried to form against you is not going to prosper and it's not going to work. But you're going to have victory tonight in Jesus' name. You know this lady standing next to you? Is she your sister? And your daughter was here last night? She really received a touch from the Lord in this service. And tonight is your night. You're receiving a touch from God even now. He's touching your body, purifying every ounce of blood in your body. Tonight, before midnight, you're going to pass uh, some kind of toxins out of your body. And you're going to wake up in the morning feeling your strength has returned to you. It feels like that you've been zapped. But now your strength is coming back to you. This weakness, it, and sometimes it's so, it's so that it's even nauseating. And it's just an extreme, overwhelming fatigue. It's inexplicable. No one has got the solution for it except Jesus. And, and if he's revealing it to me, then he's healing you too. He'd have no reason to let me see anything about you that he didn't mean to fix here in this service tonight. You believe that? Take hold of both of my hands. Now, Lord Jesus, there's healing in these hands. Just like you showed me there's healing in that daughter's hands last night. The enemy has attacked this family, but we pronounce benediction upon the plans of the enemy. And in Jesus' name, from this moment forward, you're going to use this family for thy glory and thy purpose.